Red Hat and NetScout have created a partnership to help improve telco operations and their relationships with enterprise customers. I'm Guy Daniels, Director of Content at Telecom TV, and joining me now to address the challenges and opportunities of enterprise 5G are Dr. Vikram Saxena, who is Chief Solutions Architect, CTO Office with NetScout, and Azar Saeed, who is Chief Architect Telco with Red Hat. Hello, both of you. Thank you very much for taking part in our programme today. Azar, first of all, can you tell us which industry verticals are focused on deploying enterprise 5G? Several industry verticals have shown interest in deploying enterprise 5G, partly because today they're using a lot of Wi-Fi and or LTE in that space. And now with the guarantees that 5G can provide ultra reliable low latency and massive IoT type of capability, um, 5G is a very attractive proposition for them. Um, some of the industries that we've had initial interest and lots of conversations around is manufacturing, uh, transportation, Actually, smart agriculture, believe it or not, um, in terms of deploying campus or, or you know, um, small mushroom style 5G networks um, that actually monitor um, all of the environmental variables and actually provide the right type of information to the farmers to actually do, do better. Uh, oil and gas is another area and mining um, is another vertical where they want to go use enterprise 5G to deploy in these open minefields and monitor equipment and monitor uh, different uh, you know, uh, variables so that they can actually provide better um, service and better maintenance on, those, on that particular equipment. Uh, you know, analytics is pretty uh, important in that space. You can, using 5G to provide connectivity, you can actually stream analytics from all these remote machines. The, the um, haulers and dredgers and all of that. And then based on that data, you can actually predict when an equipment is going to probably going to fail before that actually service it. Because once the equipment stops in those type of environments, it's a huge loss um, for the mining operator. Same thing in oil and gas, same thing in you know manufacturing is another area where there's a lot of interest in actually looking at the Purdue model and particularly the last wireless access uh, segment uh, there's a lot of 5G chipsets now being embedded into the uh, plant for floor, which can actually then deterministically communicate uh, back uh, in that particular Purdue model. So there's a lot of interest in enterprise 5G in all of these sectors. And we've been starting to work with them. Government is another area where there is some interest in, in deploying private 5G for various different use cases, whether it's military applications or whether it is you know ad hoc deployments um, in case of emergency. And Vikram, do you see interest from the same industry verticals as Azar's mentioned? Oh, yes, yes, certainly. I, I think that, um, you know, the, those verticals plus there are uh, more of them, but the main point I wanted to make was that um, what is the time for enterprise 5G is right uh, at this time. There is a confluence of factors that are coming together that are creating a perfect storm for enterprise 5G. And by that, I mean all the technology elements are in place um, with the spectrum that is available with the CBRS and C-band spectrum that was released, uh, big data analytics, cloud native technologies, um, and the smart sensors, which are powering all of these uh, industry verticals. They're all there. The business drivers are there. The industries want to automate. They want to improve their productivity and efficiency in these models. And the uh, the enterprises themselves are ready because there are improvements that can happen through automation that flow directly either to the top line or the bottom line. So in that sense, I think the timing is right the, uh, with the confluence of all these factors coming together. And Vikram, you say now is a perfect time, but how is this market different from what we've seen with 4G? Yes, uh, good question. Um, 4G was really a consumer-centric uh, network. Uh, because if you recall, 4G was launched just around the time where smartphones were becoming popular and the iPhones and the Androids. And basically it was designed to provide high-speed data services for consumers with these very powerful devices, which we call smartphones. But they were not really geared for enterprise services. Now with the aspects of 5G, 
you have a standalone core, you have a mobile edge computing environment, you have network slicing there. And also in terms of download speeds and latency, the download speeds are in one to two orders of magnitude better. The latency is five to 10 times better. Uh, the spectral efficiency is better. Uh, the density of devices that you can support on 5G is better. So there are a whole set of improvements that have been gone into 5G technology that are very well suited for bringing on enterprise customers and delivering what we call ultra low latency and ultra reliable services, which did not exist in the 4G space. So this is why I think 5G is very well suited for delivering enterprise services uh, than 4G was. Thanks, Vikram. Azar, if the technology behind 5G is perfectly suited to enterprises now, what would you say are the challenges in deploying and actually managing enterprise 5G? Uh, there are several uh, challenges uh, in terms of enterprise 5G. Now, enterprise 5G can be delivered in many different ways. It can be delivered as a private network to the enterprise. It can be delivered as a slice as part of the operator, or it can be delivered through a uh, public cloud as well. Um, now, with those, there are different operational models and operational contexts in each one of them. Now, of course, an enterprise that's not really, um, you know, uh, that does not really understand all of this technology in terms of how to build it may rely on a, pub a uh, public cloud or on a telco to consume that particular enterprise 5G environment. Second thing is enterprise 5G, you need more shrink wrapped uh, capabilities, whether, whether it's so software, whether it's you know, hardware tuned to small scale, but high performance. Um, whereas in a typical large 5G network, you'll, you, you need massive scale and high performance. So there, is, there are some small differences in terms of how you would do that. So enterprises need to educate themselves in terms of what is possible when they go and deploy this or they need to partner up with telcos or partner up with public cloud providers to be able to build that particular infrastructure. I've been talking to actually several um, enterprise companies uh, in manufacturing segment, in automotive um, and in government where they want to go deploy 5G infrastructure in their manufacturing plant or in the you know uh, managing telemetry from those um, vehicles or um, in the government environment, particularly on battleships and, uh, you know, campus environments or even in classified, uh, you know, w methods or ways uh, in terms of how they want to deploy that. Now, obviously, the technology itself is the same, whether you apply it for public network or private network. But in terms of how you deploy it, how you scale it, how you manage it, there are differences in terms of how you'd operate a smaller environment versus a larger environment. And I think people really need to understand some of those challenges. And then the partnerships also are incredibly important in terms of building this type of private 5G. The one last element here is what enterprises really care about is not so much as the infrastructure, but they care about applications. They care about what applications they are running on the um, infrastructure, and they care about what services they are actually delivering. So you really need better integration from an infrastructure layer to the applications layer in the context of manageability and service assurance. That's really critical for the enterprise. Whereas in telco, yeah, they have tools to be able to do that. In enterprise, they want all of that integrated together. And I think that's probably one of the biggest challenges we see in enterprise private 5G. Thanks, Azar. And Vikram, what challenges are you seeing? You know, I think the key difference when you go to enterprise applications versus consumers, as was in 4G, is the importance of uh, SLAs and enforcing critical application metrics. Um, all the industry verticals that we talked about, they are either mission critical applications, life critical applications, or safety critical applications. All of these applications cannot even tolerate a transient defect or a minor hiccup in how the network is functioning. Because if, if there is a minor hiccup, it could be detrimental to either a business process or to a life of an individual or uh, to the safety on the road. So the importance of uh, assuring 
critical performance metrics is paramount when you're supporting enterprise 5G. Whereas in the consumer case, it wasn't that critical. If my call dropped, I could redial, I could move to a different location if I have a poor curve coverage. So there was a lot of flexibility in the consumer world where if you generally had a well operating network, you could get away with it. But the strict enforcement of things like latency, reliability, throughput, these become uh, in, in significantly more important when you're serving enterprise applications. And Vikram, I'd, I'd like to build on that last point there. You, you, you talked about SLAs, but what exactly are the customer expectations for deploying successfully enterprise 5G? What are they expecting from it? Customers, I use a term called trusted network. Um, so what the customers are expecting from an enterprise 5G, if they are going to put their mission critical applications on it, they want the network to be able to deliver the performance, the security uh, that they really demand from that. Security is another important point that I didn't bring up before, but you know these devices are not smart enough. They're not intelligent to protect themselves. And there is a lot of vulnerabilities in the and in terms of attacks on these devices that can turn them into botnets, in turn create more attacks on the network and bring down critical infrastructure. So I think that customer expectations are whoever is delivering the network, whether it's a managed service provider, a telco carrier, or a system integrator, is to design and build and operate this network as a completely trusted network, which can deliver on performance as well as security requirements for the network. Now, as we said at the beginning of this program, Red Hat and NetScout are collaborating in this area. As are, what strengths and capabilities do both companies bring to address the opportunities here? Uh, interesting question. Thank you, Guy. Actually, um, we've worked very hard with our partners to enable the infrastructure to be able to deploy it in, va uh, in various different footprints, particularly for enterprise 5G. But the area that Vikram just mentioned is actually incredibly important, is to provide that level of application SLA. Um, and what we can provide from an infrastructure layer perspective is a lot of information around infrastructure metrics, infrastructure KPIs. But we also need, in addition to that, application level metrics and application level KPIs because you need to be able to correlate them together. When you correlate them, then you can actually very easily troubleshoot where the problems were and we'll be able to prove the SLA that you have um, on that given application. Because ultimately, as I said earlier, what the customer really cares about is their application. They don't care about the infrastructure. So, but they need the ability to get that delivered from the infrastructure, and they need the ability to monitor, troubleshoot, manage, and, and correlate that information so that they can understand what the challenges are and how where the problems are so they can address the root cause of it. So in this space, what we've been working with NetScout is exactly that, which is they have, NetScout has this capability to do application level SLAs, application level KPIs, application level metrics. They can measure things like mean opinion score for voice traffic. Um, now from there, we have the infrastructure layer metrics from the hardware layer, from the software layer, from the OS layer, from the system layer. And we can actually then combine these two together and create a telemetry framework model that in turn allows you to build a data lake environment, do the analytics and make it more predictive rather than just being reactive when you automate the, the entire process. And Vikram, following on from what Azar said about the partnership, how can both Red Hat and NetScout bring innovation to this space to address some of these key challenges? Yeah, great question. Uh, so I'll pick up where Azar left off. I think if you look at the landscape today in uh, any cloud native deployment, uh, there is not a shortage of metrics. Uh, there are multiple sources of data that is being generated by either the infrastructure or the containers themselves, the workloads um, and, and, and the application layer. The problem customers have is these are all siloed in their own environment. And to be able to correlate um, through automated workflows, so I can very quickly drill down into the root cause of any issues that are experiencing. That's where there is a big gap. So this is where I think NetScout, the power of their platform and their platform-oriented metrics 
and NetScout's service and application layer metrics, if we can bring them together and create a unified workflow for identifying and troubleshooting problems in a unified way, I think that will address this very important challenge for customers. They want a single pane of glass. They want to be able to look across how their applications and services are behaving and then be able to quickly drill down and find out where the problem is. And, and you know, they, that does not should not require a lot of manual piecing together of information or looking across multiple screens and swivel chairing and all that. So if you can put it all together, this is an innovation that I believe NetScout and Red Hat can bring together is to is to tie together all these metrics into a unified single pane of glass. So it makes it really easy for our customers to diagnose and troubleshoot problems. Well, Vikram and Azar, thank you both very much for telling us more about this partnership and sharing your views on Enterprise 5G. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.